Welcome. In this video, we're going to introduce the topic of local storage, which will let us save data to be stored in the browser even when a user refreshes or closes a page. Local storage is an ability to store information locally in the browser, and the options may change slightly from device to device. Depending on the device we're working with, local storage can hold from 2 up to 100 megabytes or more of data. This data has to be saved in a string form, and so JSON is one of the most common formats to use for saving data. Depending on the project we're working on, this may be useful for web interface data, such as saving different parts of the page and their statuses or displays, depending on what is going on. Also, it can be helpful for temporary or offline storage for content from a site or an app. In using JavaScript with local storage, we have the ability to read, write, and delete data from local storage. By default, when working with JavaScript, we have a local storage object. This will let us set items, get items, and remove items. You could see here that when something is saved into local storage, it is referred to as an item. Now, let's take a look at some examples of this in action and see how we could look up local storage content in the browser. We could see in this example that we have a string of text, my site, that we're saving as a variable site name. Then we're using the local storage object and the set item method, and then we pass in the two parameters. The first parameter is the name, and this has to be a unique name that we're going to find when we look up this data in local storage. This is how we will reference it when we use get item. We will refer to this name here that we create, and we're just using camel case method of saving this data. Then we have to pass in the object or the string of text that is going to be what we're saving as our item here into local storage. And that's just going to be at this point the variable site name. So we set all that up. And then when we come over into the browser, because we haven't logged anything out to the console, we won't see anything from our local storage set item here. However, along this tab, we could find resources. And inside of resources, one of these options will be local storage. There are also other ways of storing data locally, whether in a database format or temporary, cookies, others, which of these we will look at throughout the course. However, one of the most common that's used right now, and for good reason, is local storage. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. And what we see when we look up into local storage under file colon, we can see site name and my site. So we find our data there saved to the local storage. And what that means is that anywhere else in our app, we can then get this information out. And if I refresh this page, notice that that data is still there. So that's one nice thing you, you've probably noticed so far when you build something with JavaScript and then refresh it, it all goes away. So having a way to keep persistent information around is very helpful. Now I'll also notice that when I put the same code up on a domain I'm using here again desktop server to set up a blank server and so I could see it behaving as it would on a website rather than on a local file system and we could see here that the information is saved local storage and then it has the URL that this server is set up to use. So what this shows us is that local storage is domain specific. And when I'm working on this domain, I'm only going to see access to this information here. And when I'm working with file, I would only be able to get information saved to that local file. Depending on who wrote that, I may be able to get more stuff, but that is going to be sectioned off per domain. So now let's look at an example of where we do the same thing. We set information to local storage. In this case, we're not assigning it a variable. We're just hard coding in the information. Let's see, we could switch this out. It's not in JSON format, so we'll switch it to single quotes. But we're hard coding that information in, and then we're going to use get item, which we saw, and we just ask for whatever the name of it is. That will give us this information right here. And then we pulled in the header. We got the H, the first H1 element, which will be up here and we simply assigned inner HTML to be whatever it is that we just pulled out of local storage. So let's see that in action. I refresh the page and we've got my site now applying, pulling from in here. And once that information is saved, even if we were to comment out this line where it's setting this item on each page load and we pulled that out, it would still be able to get the item site name. So we could change this 
refresh the page and now it's pulling from local storage, whatever we've saved there. And get item is the next thing here that we needed to look at. So that is how you would pull information out. So whenever we are setting something into a storage system and we're getting it out, it is also helpful to know how to remove item. So, or remove whatever it is that we're working with. So in this example, what we have here is we pulled in the same header information so we could update it. We set an item to local storage and then we go ahead and get that item and then we update the header inner HTML to reflect that, then we remove it. So when I refresh this page now, notice that we're seeing my site getting pulled in here. And if I were to change this, notice that it's only getting written there for a split second and then being removed immediately. So this may be an option where occasionally you want to flush something out or remove it, and unless you do this or the user does, um, it will stay in there persistently. So knowing how to use remove item is also important and something you will want to occasionally put in to an application or into your own code in order to clear stuff out. So one thing that is quite common as your application gets bigger or whatever you're doing, you require more storage into whatever storage you're working with, in this case, local storage, you're going to want to start storing multiple things. So in this case, we might have our site name, which makes sense, but then we might also have site description. We know most WordPress sites stick out another WordPress site and you might want to display it up here under the main site name, which I'm not doing, but you would be able to figure out quite easily how to do with what we've done so far and so we would so we would in the simplest way set this information into local storage by for each one assigning them each a string and using set item on both of them and if we were to refresh our browser here we could see that both of these pieces of information are stored into local storage However, you might also assume, and correctly so, that this could get very inefficient to have to set tons and tons of data or have a number of variables that you're saving and a number of key value pairs inside of local storage. So what we'll look at next is a way that we could use objects in JSON to store all of this type of information and multiple types of information into a single local storage key value pair. So in this example, we've done something slightly different. We have an object site data, and then inside of that, we have site name and site description as object properties. Then we could save each of them having their own string, but we really only have one piece of site data to work with. However, when we come down here and do set item again, you would think, okay, we could just pass in site data on its own. However, we cannot. In order for local storage to store the information, it needs to be stored as a string. And luckily, JSON objects, as I've often referred to them, are really strings of text. So what we're going to use is JSON stringify, which we saw before, inline right here, and pass in site data. In some of our past examples, I would often break down something like this where we use set item and pass in information. But in this case, we're passing a parameter that's actually another method call, which is completely fine and something that you'll find with more and more complex JavaScript that they will pass functions into functions, or in this case, methods into methods. So doing this on the fly, we'll just take our site data, turn it into a JSON string, and then set it into local storage. So we could see that in action. We say site data, and then we pull it up, and we see that we have all of the site data stored here as a JSON string. Now, when we want to get an item out, it's going to come out in JSON format. So this is how we saved it. Notice here, it's all one string. We have the double quotation marks, all of that happening. So when we get the item out, we want to parse it back into a native JavaScript object. So this is what the local data, we set up this variable, we declared it ahead of time. Now we're assigning it a value here and we're parsing the result that we get from get item because we have to pass it and save it as a string. So this pattern is very important and something you're going to use in most all of your local storage formatting of data. You're probably going to be stringifying stuff when you pass it in and parsing it when you get out if you're using JSON, which makes a lot of sense because you could store complex pieces of data, um, entire lists of posts and content and things like that, 
all in your local storage. Now we can come back into the console and you can see down below that we're going to log out our local data, which should be this data turned into um, local storage and then pulled back out. And we could see that we have that there. We could also get the item and pull out just the site data. So we have just the site data item here, but otherwise we could pull out the whole local storage object and look at that. And then finally, just so that we're continuing to work with updating the DOM, you could see that we're pulling it in and setting it in this way. And notice that at this point, now that we've pulled it in, we're using dot notation here. We have local data. And then so rather than using get item and parsing that like we saw up here, we could simply just refer to it as something that we already have referenced and just using this simpler notation here. And that's going to give us that specifically. So this may not seem that significant. We've looked at tons of methods throughout this course building up, but this is actually a really helpful and useful technology and something that we'll be using in vanilla press and your WordPress sites can likely benefit from being sped up because now that you have stuff saved in local storage, which doesn't have to even relate to the page that you're on, um, although it can and what's going on, you could refer to this instantaneously with your JavaScript and update stuff really quickly. So now let's take a short little moment to review. One of the first things that is important to remember is that we can store data into local storage, but it's going to be in a string format. And because it's in a string format and we want to potentially save complex pieces of data, we'll be using the JSON format, which we just looked at previously to store all of these. So because of this, when we read something from local storage, we if it's in a JSON format, then we have to parse it into a native JavaScript object in order to traverse it and get what we need. Also, when we're saving data, if it's in a native JavaScript object type format, if it's just a single string, that's fine. But if it's more complex information, an array and an object, you can't necessarily save it that way. So you need to parse it or convert it, stringify it into a JSON object. So you have to use the stringify method when you're saving your data if it's that type of complex data. But luckily, we have the ability to save quite a lot of data. If you're doing this on a desktop, it's quite huge. If it's on browsers, it's a little bit smaller, but still a lot if you're just talking about um, text in this type of, of format. So if you're designing for a specific type of device, you may want to look into that more. And I have a link in the video notes that's a pretty good resource comparing a range of devices, uh, including the desktop and different versions of browsers. So now it's time to do some practice with local storage on your own. What I'd like you to do is create a JSON string with post data. So you could either write out a straight JSON string, or you could create a JavaScript object and then use JSON stringify to convert it into a JSON string. But assign this to a variable and create some post data on your own, kind of in the way that we've been working with already. Then pull that data into your code and save it to local storage. Check in your browser, check on a mobile device, make sure that it's there, and then write the code that you need to get that post data from local storage and display it on the page. And you're going to do this in the format of listing the title and the content of the post on the page. So you could work with a single post, or if you want to challenge yourself, you could have a list of multiple posts that you save into a string and then you list them out. And this is going to be so important that you do this now because when we move into the project, you're very quickly going to be presented with a scenario where you're going to have to build these type of interactions and these types of data-driven sites that are pulling from a JSON file and building out the page with JavaScript. So make sure that you take the time to practice and that you can implement this type of thing before moving on. Once you've done that, then you could go into the next section where we will introduce vanilla press and begin pulling it apart piece by piece and building it up again from scratch.